Hi, I want to make a video here based on a discussion that I had with a friend recently about some of the, the terminology that we've kind of heard at different points in time in Christian or church culture um, uh, over the years being in the church. So um, sometimes this is referred to as Christianese, um, but it's kind of the, some of the slang or some of the terms that, that get thrown around that somebody who isn't familiar with the Christian culture, Christian environment, may not know the meaning behind these terms. And so we thought it might be kind of interesting to just like uh, throw out a few of the, the terms that we've heard and define them um, and uh, see if maybe others had uh, terms that they could add to the list as well that they may have heard in, in their walk, um, in their Christian uh, uh, life, basically. So the um, the first term I wanted to refer to, So and some of these terms are, are not very endearing terms and some of them are good terms. So I'm just kind of throwing out things that We've heard both good and bad um, in Christian culture. And so one term, and this is one that's not a very endearing one, is the idea of a creaster. And a creaster would be somebody who basically goes to church only on, Christ, on Christmas and Easter. So it's not an endearing term because it's something that sometimes people refer to as somebody who would be like a nominal Christian. Like they're basically, they're only going on the days they're supposed to, but the rest of the week they're just, you know, living their lives they're like, like God isn't really at the forefront or they'd be going to church every Sunday is kind of the idea behind it. But, um, but the idea is it's, uh, um, somebody who's a nominal Christian, basically that's the idea of a, cre a creaster. So, uh, another one would be backsliding. Uh, this is somebody who, um, as, as they go through their Christian walk and as they, um, progress that maybe they fall back into sin for a while. So it's like they're, 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 they're coming up out of sin, but then they slip back a little bit. So that's backsliding, and then maybe they come out of it, and then they go forward. So uh, that's a term that, that gets uh, talked about, but the Bible says if somebody, you know, um, that uh, if somebody stumbles 70 times, that, that it, you know, the righteous man will get back up again 70 times. Uh, it says that if we stumble, we have, a, uh, we have an advocate with the Father in heaven who is faithful to forgive us. So um, we don't, Judgment Day is a future event, right? And God has us all going through this process of sanctification, and so... Um, the idea behind somebody who, who backslides is you want to try to restore them back to the faith. Um, if they refuse to repent, um, then there's a whole other issues with church discipline and so forth. But, uh, but somebody who is struggling with something, we're supposed to edify and help them uh, come out of that sin, whatever sin that they may, they may be in. Another term is walking with the Lord. Um, the idea is that this is a, it's a relate, and this ties into another term also, um, that it's a relationship, not a religion. So, um, as you go through life, you're spending time with the Lord at your side, and he's teaching you things, teaching you his ways, and so you're walking with him. Uh, another thought that I had about that is it's kind of like, um, I, had, I had a thought this way, and that it's kind of like if the Lord gives a certain commandment, if, if, the God, if God the Father gives a certain commandment in heaven, and he says, do this or don't do that, okay, um, how do you fulfill that commandment? You know, if I, if I, as a person, ask you to do something, I said, could you bake me a cake, okay? How would you go about doing that? Well, there'd be steps involved. You'd have to add a certain number of eggs, have to add, you know, a cup of flour, sugar, whatever. And each of those things is steps. So when God has commandments, there's steps to carrying out those commandments. Well, how do we go through those steps to fulfill those commandments? And that's what the Lord teaches us, that he walked ahead of us and he can walk with us to show us, to bring us to the point where we... Uh, come into obedience and can fulfill the commandments of God. So he restores us through this process of what's called sanctification. Um, let's see, some other terms here. Uh, divine appointment. Um, that's the idea that uh, it's, um, you know God brings about certain events uh, that come into place uh, in order to, um, it's almost like a miraculous kind of thing, but it's, it's, it's like uh, God brings two things together um, according to something that's, in accordance with his will. Um, so an example might be, um, you know, God brings about a situation where one person can share the gospel with another person and he caused it that those two people could meet that day so that uh, the one person might receive the gospel. That'd be an example of a divine appointment. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones here on the list. Uh, let's see, we've got um, churchianity. That's kind of a uh, again, that's not an endearing term, but the idea is that it's like the culture. Um, it's more about like the church culture and it gets away from like true, the true Christian walk. It just becomes about like the social aspect of church and it becomes churchianity. 
Um, so that's not really a good thing. You want to have like true Christianity, true true faith, true culture, not just not just about like the friendship and the fellowship, but that Christ is the, the forefront. So um, let's see what other ones we have here. Uh, this is one I had not heard of before, but my friend heard of it, which was called gastro evangelism. Uh, I guess that's the idea where you have like a food and event, and uh, then you preach the gospel and event, and and so it's like. The food is a draw, but then you also use it for the, for the sake of the gospel. So, again, I don't know. Some of these aren't endearing, but they're, they're terms that we've heard out there. Uh, bedside Baptist, that's an idea where um, uh, if you sleep in late and you miss church, so maybe you uh, go on the Internet and you watch uh, church on the Internet or something like that, you're going to Bedside Baptist. Or you just slept in and you missed church. You went to Bedside Baptist. So, um, let's see. Testimony, um, that's when somebody has... Uh, accepted Jesus in their heart and how the Lord changes their life for the better. So they, they're testifying or they're giving their testimony as to how they were before the, they met Jesus. And once they accepted Jesus in their heart, how Jesus changed their life. So that's giving your testimony. So that it's, it's also it goes along with another term, which is witnessing. They're bearing witness of how, how God changed their life to others. So they're sharing their testimony. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Um, Relationship, not religion. That's a term. Uh, so, I mean, uh, religion is when you just go through a bunch of motions and practices and so forth. And and, and um, it's kind of like the process of it. And religion isn't necessarily always a bad thing. It sometimes gets characterized as a bad thing. But the idea is that it's not about the things you do. It's about who you know. And so when somebody invites Christ in their heart and they develop a personal relationship with the Lord, that changes them. It's not just about a bunch of actions and a bunch of works. It's about spending time with the creator of the universe, with our maker, and, and letting him change your heart. It's a personal relationship that you have with that, with your creator. And that starts by um, going through the, basically the sinner's prayer. And I have another video that, that kind of addresses that. But it's the idea of, of confessing and repenting that you're sorry for your sins and asking Jesus in your heart so you can have that personal relationship. And then he comes in and he dwells with you so that you can, you can have that experience of knowing the, the creator of the universe on a personal level. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, church hopper. Um, that's somebody who, uh, doesn't really have a home church. They might go to this church over here and this church over here and they like hop around a little bit, but they don't really have a, a, a specific church that they call home, so to speak. So that'd be a church hopper. Um, let's see in the flesh as opposed to the spirit. Um, that would be the idea is that when, when you're, uh, when you become a Christian, um, and you have uh, the Spirit of God living inside you, before that, you're living in your, your fleshly body. And so you're driven by what your natural fleshly body carnal desires are. So food, money, uh, sustenance, you know, all the things of this world, that that's your motivation. But then when you have the Spirit of God living in you, all of a sudden, that becomes your motivation. You're able to fulfill and, and walk out the will of God and not walk out just whatever the desires of your fleshly body is. So it's walking in the Spirit as opposed to the flesh. Um, let's see what else we got on here. Um, altar call. Uh, so, um, that's an idea sometimes at churches where if there's, uh, and I don't know how much they do this anymore, but the idea was that there's a point in time where they call people down to the front, actually to the altar of the church, if they want to give their life to Christ. So they would kneel at the altar and, and basically say the sinner's prayer and say, and confess their sins and say, and ask Jesus into their heart. So, uh, the sinner's prayer is very similar to that. It doesn't necessarily mean having to go to the front of the church, but that's something that they've done at church um, many times in history. And and any, every Christian has gone through some form of that, where they've they've confessed that they're a sinner and they've asked Jesus into their heart. Um, that's kind of the idea behind uh, uh, an altar call. You're basically doing that publicly at a church setting. Um, let's see what else we would have here. Um, well, I mean, these are kind of the, some of the basic ones, but, you know, I just want to throw some of those terms out there. Again, some of them, they're not, they're not always good, they're not bad, but they're terms that we've heard. And so some people might um, come across these terms and might not know what's being referred to. But uh, if you have some other Christianese type terms, some, some terms you might have heard in church culture, and you may want to define them or put them, put them on the list, leave a comment below, a like, comment, or subscribe, and maybe tell some of the things or the, the slang terms and so forth you've heard in church. Um, again, like I said, this is it, it, any, any social group creates its culture and, and, and you're going to, you're going to come across terms and that, uh, they kind of develop in the course of 
growing up or living in that culture. And so um, I just wanted to kind of like talk about a few of those things because uh, some people may not be aware. They might he hear these terms thrown around, especially if, if somebody's a new Christian, they might not know what they mean. Um, so don't, you know, take them all with a grain of salt that there's there's things like that that, that get talked about in church, but um, that's not the focus. The culture, the culture is one thing. Uh, the focus is the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ, that your personal walk with the Lord. That's the focus. That's what changes you. So um, this is more like just a fun video to, to you know, throw out some of those things that, that people sometimes talk about um, in, in Christianese and in, in Christian culture. So anyways, if you got some more, um, add some to the list below in the comment and like and subscribe. And I appreciate you watching this video and I hope you have a blessed day in Christ. Amen.